Tom here from Lawrence Systems and SureNAS has finally added their per application IP address binding options. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set that up. So let's get started. Now, I'm running the latest version of TrueNAS 25.041, the latest available here in June of 2025. Yes, it says there's an update available. That's a bug I haven't fixed. They're aware that's been reported. This should also work, and you can refer to their documentation. You'll also find a link down below that it works in the version 24.10 latest as well. Now, the first place we want to go is to networking, and you'll see I have a few of these interfaces set up. I don't have any IPs on these, but if I were to add any IP addresses to these interfaces, they would also be added to that list. So this is the main interface right here, and it has a VLAN 10 attached to it. Now, no matter what type of interface, they have to be set up here first in order to work. So let's go ahead and add another interface. I'm going to add another VLAN to walk you through the process. It'll be VLAN 1337, my lab network, the parent interface, which is the interface that this VLAN is available on, is ENP1 S0F1, VLAN tag of 1337. I'm going to scroll down here and add the IP alias. So we'll use 10, 13, 13, 45, and this is a slash 24 network. If you wanted to add more than one, you can just keep hitting add and you can add multiple here. We're just gonna add one IP addresses. Please make sure that this IP address is available, ping it on your network before you assign it. Because if you assign it to something that's already assigned, well, you'll have a conflict and some problems. We're gonna hit save. We'll go ahead and test these changes, confirm, test changes. and then save the changes because they appear to work. If in the event you've screwed this up in some way, it will just lock up on the screen and eventually go through a timer where it reverts back. Also make sure once it works to click save changes, that way you don't lose any of them. But now we have these three separate IP addresses bound to the system. Now we can go over to the apps and we'll take glances. This is just a default install. It's working fine, but let's go ahead and see the new option. We'll scroll down here and then we have host IPs. Now this is available when you're installing it as well as after you installed. So if you have just gone next and yes your way through an application and want to do this later, not a problem at all. Something I want to note, the host IPs, even when empty, means it binds to all the IP addresses now. I want to show this really quickly by going back to the application. We click here and we click on the web UI. We'll hit continue. And we can see it stops going to the main IP address of 162.16.16.45. But if we change this to 10.13.13.45, you'll find it's already available there. It would also be available on the 192.168 address I've got assigned to this. So each of the addresses, it binds to all of them automatically. Now let's go back and adjust those applications. And we'll go back into Glance as our example. We'll click Edit. Scroll down. And we want to add a bind. Now this allows you to bind it to each IP address that you want. So if we added more than one, we could have both of these in here. But I only want to bind it to the new address right here, the 10.13.13.45. Scroll down to the bottom, hit update. It's going to redeploy. Now it's back up and running. When we click the web UI, it's now gone to the new URL, the 10.13.13.45. But if we go here and we try to go back and refresh the page, you can see that it's no longer bound to the 172.16.16.45. Now, one thing to keep in mind that is very important here is we're going to go back over to networking and we're going to look at the default gateway, which is right here at the bottom. So we'll click on settings. There is only one default gateway. So no matter which other IPs I assign to this, it always goes out the default gateway. So you can bind them to the other IP addresses, but in terms of this application, when it reaches out to the internet, it's going to be pulling via the default gateway and therefore also the default IP address of the system. And in the case of this system, it is the 172.16.16.45. So this does not change how the backend routing work. It only changes which interfaces that the application is bound to. Something to keep in mind if you're worried about it reaching out and reaching out via your public IP address if you don't have any extra routing parameters on there. Just something to keep in mind. As I demonstrated in the video, it's easy to do as long as you have kept your system up to date as noted in the TrueNAS documentation that you'll find linked down below. If you've got thoughts, questions, or different takes about today's topic, drop them in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing and learning from all of you. 
like and subscribe. If you're looking to connect with me or learn more about what services we offer, head over to lawrencesystems.com. You'll find links to all my socials and just more ways to connect. Thanks for watching. Take care. Check out my TrueNAS playlist, which you'll find links somewhere around here.